and welcome back. I'm Shelf Unit and this is my continuing let's play of Underrail. So last time we cheesed our way to victory. Doing the old duck and run around the other side manoeuvre to finally beat Balor. And I'm just going to take the Stygian coin, his red cybernetic eye, some cash. He's got some beautiful armor. And Balor's hammer. Due to his extreme weight, the sledgehammer is almost completely unwieldable. In, unwieldy in combat, except for those endowed with demonic strength. So it does 100 to 200 damage. Is Nor's damn mechanical threshold when attacking organic damage increased by 10%. For every point in strength above 8, you need 20 strength to actually use it. So you would need, it would be 120% damage, so you're looking at 220 minimum damage per hit. So 50 weight. That is an amazing thing. And a drinking horn, which once probably used ceremonially. Since you can't just place it on the table and expect it not to spill. 225 XPs. Boom. And I'm going to leave everything else there. Because we're just going to look at these things. Take the important bits. And then once I've done doing that. I will. I will go and I will. Carry all this stuff off. Ooh, scoped. Marauder assault rifle. I will go and I will carry all of this stuff back. Ooh, shock tungsten steel sledgehammer. Back to. Uh, Back to the various storage areas. Encyclopedia fragment, battery. Huh. Rifles and shotgun magazine. Don't know exactly what to do with it. Technical manuals. Hmm. Let's see what other stuff we have. Bits and pieces here. More bits and pieces. Hacking required. Wow. Tons of batteries. Lockpicks required. Yeah, some crossbows. Hacking, so I'll just need to use some of those batteries. Arm my hacksaw. stuff. Anything else in there? No. So there's more more corpses in here. Ooh, iron head. Weirdly shaped helmet. Huh. Weird. Okay. A little bit more exploring. There's that Pentapus barbecue. Ooh. I might uh, improve. Take that. Right hand barbecue. Just some 
bits and pieces, casings. Seems like a lot of casings and bandages. Never going to say no to bandages or cash, to be honest. Or that. Uh, more barrels. Down here. Lovely. How much stuff am I carrying now? Nearly everything I can. More cash. Okay, let's. Really? Be honest and say, I cannot imagine that. Uh, That there would be anything else around here that is going to be needed. Okay, I'm not going to take those yet. Some more cash and blood and captions. Okay, well, I've just got the round here to do next, and then it'll be no knife mod, and then it'll be basic no oh, junk pile with actual junk in it. Empty shells, bum bum bum. Okay, so I am going to transfer and move everything, and I will see you back here. See you in a bit. And we're back. Apparently, we've been waylaid by a beggar. A young man, enveloped in a rough and well-worn robe, turns to you and speaks with a frail voice. Hey, sister, go to Sharon. He extends his hand towards you. Because of my perception, your eyes are not easily distracted by the open hand hovering before you, seemingly asking for generosity. As the other one seems far more worthy of your attention. It's out of plain sight, perhaps tucked into a long sleeve or is missing altogether. The way he moves that whole arm to the back, suddenly trying to conceal it from your prying eyes, makes the alarm bells in your head start ringing. I'll give him ten coins. Take this. He pulls a knife on you. Thanks, but I'd rather have everything you've got. Give me the money now. No. Don't be stupid, sister. Just give me the money. No, oh, I've got something you like very much, punk. Not a good idea, buddy. Let's try and get away. Because he seems far uh, more adept. He will drink my blood.
where the hell is the uh Three more turns of that. Nice, let's try and get away from him. What are you doing, you asshole? <sighs> this is just ridiculous. It's, it's a waste of time me bothering with this, I'm going to reload. Oh, now! Now you're after me, of course, because why wouldn't you be after me? Okay. don't have the chance to uh, to do anything else um, do I have anything on me that could work? I don't think I do <sighs> this is ridiculous If you pull out whatever it is you're hiding in that sleeve, and I'll pull your spine merit through your arse. Well, he takes one step back away from you, the eyes on you the whole time, and he bolts without uttering a word. Run, you spineless bastard, you're a Fair enough. I'm not a big fan of that. I did not enjoy that at all. Especially since the guy. I mean. I'm not sure how I can defend myself against close combat weaponry at the moment. It just seems very strange. Okay, let's go in here and talk to the chief about Baylor. I have his eye right here. He smiles briefly. Pure gold. I'm more than glad to see you've managed to accomplish such a difficult task. Now that he's dead, we need only wait and see what happens with the Ironheads. I'm expecting a favourable outcome. Favourable for us. Get a grand. You earn this well done. Need to go. See you later. Three and a half thousand XP. And I will get back to you when I have ferried more stuff over. Okay, and finally many decades later, and quite literally about an hour of gameplay later, I'm back. Um, we've still got plenty of, well, plenty I say, a bit of space. Up here. Um, we've still got to try and locate this mysterious object, but none of the uh, merchants seem to have any idea where that is. Camp Hathor, Rat Hound King, we're still a little ways away from being able to deal with, I believe. Um, junkyard, we've uh, 
there, we've done there. We've still got to do that, which is fairly simple. South gate. We just need to find out what's happening to Terry and Lloyd Baker. Find out what the problem in rail crossing and a system with that problem. Don't want the brittle death of the woman whose body lies in the medical level operating room. We can't do that. This is what we're in the process of doing. Um, warehouse east of rail crossing. So I think we should travel back to rail crossing. We also created some patching kits and repaired a couple of bits and pieces. Um, I do want to check my guns. Yeah, that needs to be that needs to be repaired. Where is my? I've got my those. I have this. My God, all of this crap needs to be repaired. Okay, I'm going to go and dismantle some guns and create some repair kits. And I'll be back again when we get to rail crossing. Okay, and we're back. We have created repair kits, advanced repair kits, etc., etc. So I have I have things of that nature now. And we are here next to rail crossing. So this is north, south, west, east of rail crossing. And I assume this is the east part of that. So let's try down here. Large area here. Just a quick save. This is a big area, relatively speaking at least. Another trap detected. Okay, so this is very clearly the uh, the warehouse area. Sentry bot, which I think I can deal with via that. That's out of the uh, course. Well, let's just give it a quick sniper rifle. And actually, no, it's just easier to. So what was this? This was a 
locker located in warehouse. So this isn't a locker. This is clearly a locker of some description. Basic lock picking. A secret crawl space. Where is the secret crawl space? Hacking. Clicked on it. Can you ah, there's a secret crawl space. A lock pick. Nothing. Nothing. A gun, which is okay, I suppose. Old train schedule and some ampules, which is ampules are always good to have. Some ammo and nothing. Did I, I did not see what was in here. Jaguar. Some sponge filters, another ampule, and some cyanic filter. Where, where is this crawl space? Ah, ventilation shaft, there. Traps detected. Wow. If I was a trap person, Still here. Crikey. If I was a trap, more of a trap person, I should say, this would be. Picking 50. Another lock pick. <laughs> this is quite amusing. Lots of mushroom brew. And some grenades. Is, is that it? Oh, mushroom brew. Really? I find this to be slightly, slightly annoying. I better get a lot of experience for this. A lot of experience. Even though it didn't actually take much, but still. This way. <sighs> See, I, I, I still can't understand why they made it so that this place didn't have the station, you know, in here. Do it in here. Dude isn't here. How's it going, man? 
I've opened the locker. His eyes turned to fire. And and what'd you find, man? Mushroom brew. Freaking mushroom brew. Twenty bottles. Why is it in a warehouse full of traps? And mushroom brew? How did you really know about all this? Visions, dude, man. Visions. I, I didn't know about the mines, though. I, I didn't put them there. If that's what you're implying. I, can I have the brew now? Oh, I'll just take it. Thank you very much, man. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to test the quality of this beauty. <laughs> he does not get the chance to taste the nectar, however. And it instantly becomes voiceless. His joyful eyes turn vacant, and his smile collapses into utter slack jawedness. He then slumps forward with his hair, hair dropping over his, con concealing his face, thus marking the beginning of another session. Another vision. Fortunately, this time around, words reach with more clarity than previously. Homes. We must find caves. We must reach. Like, seriously. A lot of walking. Ingredients. She must fetch. <laughs> Journey. Journey. He shrugs. Journey. He lifts his head. Life settles back down into his desolate eyes, and the smile reconstructs itself out of a drooling mess. The eyes focus, and so do his thoughts, but... But first, we must drink, man. This is how sparse could have ignited his gaze. The life in him, and he snaps out of it, only now does he appear to be fully himself again. He gawks at you, confused as a hopper in front of a distorted mirror. He smiles. How's it going, man? Damn, time sure flies when you're enjoying the brew, man. Dude, you had another vision. Don't you remember anything? Look, does your mind just malfunction every time it happens? Uh. Dude? He snaps his fingers. Right, the vision, I. You know, I've been getting a lot of visions involving you lately. I mean, before it was like twice a year, maybe, but now it's like all of them. And seeing me in visions before you met me? Duh. I sincerely hope I was fully dressed in it. Don't worry, man, you were as covered as a hazmat technician. His eyebrows bounce. Actually, there was this one instance, but it was because of siphoners, yeah, so it was like justified. It made sense. What? Siphon is like green and slimy and water love, and I once saw either cat, kaplunk, and it's gone. I said, what? A uh, short memory you got there, like green and slimy and water loving siphons. I once saw either cat. I did not hear that. I did not hear. Anyway, what about this vision? What did I do in this vision? He checks himself for some brew, producing it a moment later with an ear to ear smile. The table is now littered with bottles of mushroom brew. Ten for you, ten for him. The vision is difficult to explain this one. It requires a, a prepared mind, and to get to that point, you're gonna need some help, man. I'm ready. Drink the dude. You aren't sure how much time has passed, but what you are sure of is that the wretched gravity has now become your new nemesis. The vilest, most evil of all forces of nature simply won't leave you be. Its imperceptible claws are toying with you, prodding you, bullying you into kissing the unwashed floor. And what may be worst of all, its ultimate objective seems to be to deprive you of your precious liquor by puppeteering your hands and just spilling it all over the table. The dude seems to be resisting this force's devious influence, a stoic sieged by terror itself. The passing patrons observe your struggle. The more you feel the stairs, the less you give a rat's ass. This guy appears out of thin air. His lips move, producing sound. Everything he's saying is slurred. Words fused into one very long one. He's still not. He seems familiar. Maybe. Behold, he's talking to the dude. Dude answers in foreign language. The man leaves. Um, dude? As soon as you speak, the brew appears on the table before you. You feel a sudden overwhelming thirst. Never mind. Continue drinking. Your head is light, your body is heavy. Gravity is tipping your balance in its own favour. You'd punch it if you could, but it hurt the last time you tried. In pain. That annoying guy materialises again. Can't this man speak properly? He doesn't even please. The scout speaks volumes. His words are meaningless. You mumble something to him. His stare shines brighter than the exploding pileup of a thousand trains. The dude takes over and extinguishes the flames. Unwillingly, the man nods and disappears. You're at the, the best. Again. More bottles ambush you. As you glance at the table, seductive, enticing, marvellous. I just can't, I'm gonna vomit. Your nose is full of dust while the pool of your drool feels warm on your face. You raise your head only to slam it against the ceiling. The ceiling it is not, though. It's the underside of a table. As you slowly regain your consciousness, a voice from above beckons you. Can you hear me? 
Find your way from underneath the table and climb up your chair. And then you sit down. Hey man, how are you feeling? Love. <laughs> Glad to hear it, man. And that means it's working, man. It means it's working. I was scared for a moment, you know, not because of things like that happened, but because we ran out of brew. I had two marami and those tasted odd, man. Maybe they were spoiled, but once we went through that, I had to get some, like, more. Yeah, well, things. Berkey was a little worried, man, so he came to, like, check up on us a few times. It's okay now, man. Listen, hey, listen. We're exactly where we want to be, for we have been elevated to the summit of human consciousness, man. In this state, our minds are capable of seeing over the thick mists of our earthly senses and understand that our reality is so much different from how we normally perceive it. And that's not the only one. New curves, new details, new rules, new worlds, and once our minds finally fathom our reality in its true form, only then will our eyes be able to see the rifts in its very fabric through which we can reach its every corner. Well, maybe not every corner, but at least five, or even beyond. This is crucial, man. Look around and tell me, how does everything appear to you? It's a little bit blurry and shaky. There, that's what we need now. We now perceive the world alike. You ask me what you did in this vision? I will show you, and I will, you will do it again. Show, don't tell. Some road keys are at the station always used to yell. And he was right. He drank battery acid and died a week after that, but he was right. Sounds, sounds nice. What, what, what's the first thing we need to do? I mean, I mean, do, dude. Thing is, in, in the vision I saw it, homes, caves, a lot of walking ingredients of some kind of journey. You and me, man, together on a journey. The end of time, Morty. <laughs> what do we have to do? Do we have to? Man, what have you been drinking? You do not ignore a vision. You do not say, well, vision like no. You do not kick it in the shin and run away like a little girl and hide in a hoppus crevice. If a vision shows you taking a journey, you better make sure you take that damn journey. You can, like catch my drift. What's the end of this journey? Do we get anything good? I mean, what the hell? Have you learned nothing so far? What do you live for if not the journey of life itself? You stare at a lovely butt so that you can just say you sort of it. Like, appreciate the courage and firmness, man. Do you sort of pass it by just to see them walk away, or do you find amusement in their confused and agitated expressions? You drink just to get drunk, or to become a better man? The end is not what you should care or even think about. To get something, get what? Coins, booze? That'd be good, but still, what? What do you want? Some abstract thing that'll make you feel like you've accomplished something? You don't need that. You need to absorb yourself in the journey and enjoy it while it lasts, man. That's life, man. So relax and let the dude do his thing. Trust me, because I, I don't have a clue what the point of this journey is and what's going to happen along the way, other than a few bits I already spoke about. So first stop. Simple. You find homes. Let's go, dude. I don't know exactly what we're going to find, but for sure it's going to lead us to our next location, our next step in the vision. Probably. Okay, follow me. We're going to start with the core, because that's the only one I can remember right now. Let's follow the dude. This is the place, man. Uh, this is gonna be shit. What in the filthy barrels? Hey, dude's mom. What, what's cooking? What is that, mother man? Hey! An ancient shriveled woman angrily waves a ladle at you. Pipe work and sends a drop off. If I wanted some zone ass bastards to barge into my home, I would have never left the drop zone. You folks leave this place now, or else I'm gonna, op I'm gonna open a cat of zone out and show you how this grammar dominates publicers like you. Beat it, y'all, now. Excuse me, ma'am, but this place used to be mine, you know, so you're actually a barge into my place, you, you nasty woman. We just need to, like, find something important and we're, like, gone. What you say, Dross Face? Your place, get out of here. You two pipe scutching hooksy. Now, how about we give you a few Sharons for your triple? Would it be okay then for us to take a peek? Sharons, what exactly are you offering? Let's go 20. Not bad, but if anything you want so important, then it ought to be worth some more, right? Really? 100 Sharons? Tominating, you're free to do your business. Just be quick and make no mess, dig, or else she threads you with a ladle. And that's a hundred Chirons. You look around the room. Man, this place looks like so much different. Now, start searching. If you find anything that looks important, probably is. Let's go, man. Let's go. 
Got it, dude. Okay. I think this. Uh, why, why? Why am I? Why do I have? Uh, all your base attributes are being reduced by four. Of course, I have. Okay, I think this would be a good time to uh, to leave and finish this episode. I'm not sure exactly how long it is because it literally has taken me well in excess of an hour just on moving things around. So I shall say thank you and goodbye and see you next time. If you've enjoyed, please subscribe. If not, don't worry about it. Thank you again. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.